Hi, I'm James. And I'm Adam. And in this eBuyer video, we're going to be taking a look at the Steel Series Rival 3 wireless gaming mouse. With a battery rated of 400 hours, it'll never drop out mid game. Plus, with dual uh, wireless connectivity modes that includes both a super low latency 2.4 gigahertz band and a universal Bluetooth standard, it really does cover you off well. I've also heard though, Adam, that this has a really high DPI slash CPI. Can you tell us a bit more about that? Yeah, it's rated up to 18,000 CPI. DPI and CPI are interchangeable, but it's great if you're at the lower end for first person shooters like Valorant, where you want deliberate um, sweeping movements for um, tracking a target or ramping up the CPI to high levels for strategy games or MOBAs, for example, in League of Legends for darting your cursor back and forth across the screen. So, so why would we want a higher or lower degree of sensitivity? So say in Valorant, why is that high DPI slash CPI important? What kind of in practical terms does that mean, I guess? Right, when you're in a first person shooter like Valorant, you want to be able to deliberately track a target across the range of the screen. So if they're like moving from one end of the screen to another, you can track their movements, like land a headshot, for example. Whereas in a strategy game like League of Legends, there's a lot of in visual information going on, so you need to be able to dot your cursor back, um, dot your cursor back and forth across the screen, so you can click on targets. So in reality, then, in a first-person shooter, having a really high DPI slash CPI mouse like this one and the low latency, which we'll come on to could actually give you a tangible benefit and allow you to win games over your opponents that haven't got that equipment. Exactly, you want to really find your ideal CPI and tune it in using the software. Right, okay, so it's all about experimenting and finding like the exact pinpoint level and going, yes, those are my settings that no one else can use, but for me they are like perfect. Yeah, because everyone's different, depends on your setup, your personal preference, whether you like to use your wrist for movement or your tie your arm, so. So is that why we sometimes see like esports players look like they're kind of cleaning their desk yeah, with exactly. a cloth because they're moving the mouse that much? Yeah. But it's th that's kind of their fine tune setting. Yeah, just um, having that, being able to adjust your DPI is super important for gaming mice. I think it probably makes sense to take it out of the box next, take a look at the form factor. This is a right-handed gaming mouse as well, so we can perhaps talk about that and why that's important or, or obviously not so important <laughs> as such. With the mouse and box then, we can actually take a look at the design. It's got a grippy scroll wheel, uh, left and right click, uh, rated for 60 million key switches and some programmable buttons as well. Now we can actually see here, if we take uh, the top cover off, this is where your AA batteries are gonna go and your wireless dongle comes into play. Interestingly, you can operate this mouse with just one battery in it. So if you want to go for the lightest weight possible, this is the optimal path. Or you could use both the batteries for the super long battery life. So what, what would be the advantage, say, of having that lighter weight? Why would we want kind of a lighter weight mouse, for example? Right, so in first person shooters, that makes flicking the mouse back and forth lighter and it puts less strain on your arm muscles for extended gaming sessions. Nice, let's have a look. With the mouse turned on, you can see a tiny bit of RGB parking through on the mouse wheel and it's working just fine with one battery plugged in. So essentially we could have sort of 200 hours or six months equivalent of battery life with the single battery or a year or 400 hours essentially with both batteries. Yeah. It's pretty good. Mm -hmm. It also looks as well like we've got the Steel Series uh, software has literally prompted straight out the bat. I haven't had to go online and actually look for anything. I can simply install it with a single button. Haven't got to jump into the web browser and this will give us that granular control we talked about earlier right over in terms of DPI and CPI sensitivity and of course any of our programmable buttons as well on the side of the mouse which will by default be for forward and backwards navigation but we could literally program to anything. Exciting stuff. We've loaded up some Valorant, but before we start, I just want to mention how lightweight this mouse is. Even with the one battery installed, it's surprisingly lightweight in the hand. And if we start this um, shooting range, we can probably test this mouse's DPI capabilities. I'm more of a low sensitivity gamer, as you can see, so I have to make wide deliberate swipes across the surface. But this allows me to precisely hone in on an enemy's location without making overly twitchy movements. You see, as I spawn in, I have to move my hand quite deliberately, but the weight allows me to stop on a dime. And this isn't really even a competitive level of sensitivity. You can ratchet it down even further. The mouse also has side mouse buttons, just a thumb twitch away. So this allows you to rebind them to like in-game actions such as grenade throwing, so you don't have to awkwardly stretch across the keyboard. What makes gaming mice stand out against conventional mice is their adjustability. And there's a DPI toggle built right into the mouse itself, so you can go from a low DPI, which we have now, or ratchet it up to a very twitchy high DPI. This would be better in a cramped play space or if you just generally prefer higher DPI. 
As you can probably tell, I'm not entirely used to high DPI in first person shooters, but you could definitely get used to this if this is your playstyle. To see how your DPI affects everyone differently, I'm gonna hand this over to James. So, I am in the hot seat and I'm about to get going. I've tuned the DPI to kind of my perfect level, to be honest with you, and let's see if that makes me any good when it comes to a little bit of Valorant. Where is he? There he is. Here we go again. I think Adam's kind of covered off all of the key points as far as mouse technicalities go, so I'm gonna use this opportunity to focus on just trying to get a fairly decent score. There we go, that was a little bit of a last minute one. There we go, there's four. Oh goodness, this is a lot of pressure. This DPI really does help though in terms of actual sensitivity. I've played quite a bit of Valorant today on different laptops, gaming mice, keyboards, different setups. And I've got to say, eight at this stage of the game is the highest score I have achieved yet. Make that nine. Looking good, feeling good, looking good. Let's just dump, jump the DPI a little bit more. And you can see what difference that makes in terms of just panning over that much bit quicker. Whoa, no, I don't want that thing. No, 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 no. <laughs> no, it nearly went very wrong there, ladies and gentlemen. But still, a uh, score about 11 and the DPI on the mouse really uh, giving me a helping hand. But other than that, I think that pretty much wraps it up for our first look, unboxing and sort of mini review of the Steel Series Rival 3. Thanks for tuning in and see you next time. Goodbye.